Hey guys, Eric here again. Um, today I have, uh, I still have Joe and Angie's Chrysler 200 in here, but I figured there would be a good time. Whenever I was just looking over some technical data for the car, I mean, I've noticed a couple things whenever I was under air that this looked like it had uh, active wheel sensors. I never put one of them on a scope yet, but uh, I figured no better time than the present, right? All four wheels are off the ground. I could just roll this and drive and see what kind of signal we could see with the uh, eight scope. In the past, I've had trouble with the U-scope getting a good uh, wheel speed sensor uh, waveform, but that was mainly on the passive. If we're, if we're going for a full 12 volts, that's what I was looking on the service data. They are active. There is a 12 volt supply, but we could see the signals uh, approximately 1.6 volts and 14 milliamp. The computer's actually using a, an amperage, but what we're doing is we're gonna measure the voltage and see if we could see a, a square wave out of it or some kind of control on it that it's figuring out the speed with. Now with the 12 volt one, I figure the U-scope might even pick that up. It, it's, it's a very small amount of voltage. So we're gonna see how the HS512 does it first and then if, if it does it fine or if we, if, even if it can't, I can switch over the leads to the U-scope, see what we're getting with that. But all right, I already back probed it, the sensors, and I'm getting on, on the first wire that I back probed, I was getting nothing going to battery ground. The service data is telling you to use the, the battery ground for, uh, or chassis ground, anything for uh, ground instead of the actual speed sensors ground you, you and on this there it's confusing there's a signal return and there's a signal positive or but what we want is the signal positive usually would be going after a signal return but what you want to do is back probe the signal positive the wire that you're actually getting battery voltage on that's the one it's supposed to change and uh i've seen a scanner danner video uh he was I believe he changed it to AC coupling so he could get uh, the wave on it because with the full 12 volts, it's a, you know it's, it's only to be changing a volt or two. So it's going to be interesting to see what we see. And he couldn't get a uh, the because the amperage is in milliamps. He couldn't get a good uh, you know amperage waveform. But you know, and, and if he can't, he has a pico scope. I have an eight scope. We're going to see what it does. What I'm going to do is calibrate the probes. I have the clamp on the one probe so they're together. You just go down to calibration, zero level. Set the channel, channel one, continue. All right, we calibrated. Okay, now I'm going to hook back into the sensor connectors and then we're going to see what kind of signal we get. Okay, we can see we got battery voltage. I'm using the data logger, the multimeter on part of H scope. Um, I would like to start with this, but I, I haven't really used the multimeter that much on here. And I just really felt more comfortable actually finding which wire was the 12 volt supply with just, you know, my trusted old, you know, multimeter but you know this picked it up but that's where i want to emphasize the calibration because when i first plugged this in it was only getting eight volts on something that we knew was getting 11 on there so make sure you calibrate every time because you don't want to go chasing ghosts all right guys i'm going to turn it over to the oscilloscope mode and i'm going to start the car and then uh to get rid of the glare i'm going to just turn back on the screen recorder get a little bit more clear picture on your guys end all right i'll be back all right, guys, right now the wheel isn't spinning. It's in drive. It comes and goes like it would when it'll start spinning them on its own. You can see we are getting square waves. I mean, it, now, I'm going to try and move it to AC. Okay, with AC coupling, now we should be able to drop down to a smaller scale. On the three volt scale, let's pause it and start it again. 
Yeah, it's very good. Now I'm going to switch to the automotive module. And same thing I'm going to say on the three volt scale with AC coupling. Record. Record. Start. Okay. Stop a second. Not seeing the same signal for sure. Okay. What are we going to do? See if we can see the signal on the bottom. Time, we'll give it a little bit more time. And then we'll start. So we can do this full screen also. There we come down our square ways. We could also do take a filter, try a low pass filter, and see how that cleaned it up. We still kept our highs and lows, and we got a you know really nice looking square wave out there. Looks pretty good. Now what I'm going to do, see what it looks like with the filter on recording. Let's start. I'm going the wrong way for that. Still recording. We could record this up. To, uh, looks like 20 minutes. But you record it in full screen. This before we started. Then there's where the wheel stops. see where the wheel stops spinning. It's actually still recording. I'm going back and looking at data that there's where it stopped and there's where it started spinning again. So it's kind of nice you could be recording and reviewing at the same time. I stopped recording there. I'm going to save that just for the hell of it. I was going to say in case he has a speed sensor problem in the future, but usually what you do is you just check the, check one of the ones that do work for that instead of going towards, uh, you know, looking for a known good waveform for a wheel speed sensor. I mean, it, it's not that precise. It, this is just I wanted to see what we could get. The H-scope does pretty good on it. I like that. You know, I'm real happy with that. Um... I'm going to just start the recording and then I'm going to get in the car and actually increase the gas a little bit, give it some gas, increase the speed, see if we see a change in uh, waveform. Put it on full screen, I'm going to hit start, let her start going. No, it's not actually following along, live. Alright, now I'm going to stop it.
Now, it wasn't recording live, it would have been hard to see. We see as the speed increased, the frequency changes greatly. That would have been the idle right there. And if we're looking, you know, if you have one you're looking for, it's not responding or something, that's a good, because there's where it was just that idle crawling along on its own. And there's where I started giving her some gas. So we see the frequency increase and then there's where I shut the key off. So all in all, that's pretty good. I'm very impressed with that. What I'm going to do is while I have the leads on it, I'm going to just switch over to the U-scope, see what we get on that. It's, uh, I imagine, so it's something very much similar, only on a smaller screen, because it, it's, it, we're up to the 12 volts before when this thing was looking for like uh, millivolts on a passive wheel, wheel speed sensor that was supposed to generate its own AC signal. I mean, there was a couple that I did actually get a waveform off of it with the U-scope, and there was other ones, uh, mainly Ford trucks. I mean, I, I never got a good reading with the U-scope off of a Ford truck, and you want to almost condemn a wheel speed sensor. And you know, most of the times that's what's wrong with it anyways, if you're getting the speed sensor code, but still, You'd like to be able to see, you know, if you're getting a code, check the, the speed sensor. These you check right at the, where they plug in. You don't try to back probe the hub or anything like that. You're going to just, you know, be in the worst boat. But all right, let, let me hook up the U-scope and I'll be back. All right, guys, hooked up to the U-scope. It does work pretty good. You can even get your frequencies. You could drop some meters, get what you need to get. But I did have to use the, well, let me put this in park and shut her up. I did have to use the AC coupling, the adapter that goes to the positive lead on the U-scope. I'll show you what I mean when I take it out. But other than that, I mean, she worked pretty good. All right, guys, here's what I was talking about. Uh, with the H or with the U-scope, rather, you get this little... AC coupling filter that goes in between your uh, lead and the back probe. And uh, you could do the same, like uh, whenever I was first looking at that wheel speed signal without it, it was like, you know, very hard to see. It just looked like a lot of hash in a 12 volt signal. But with the uh, AC coupler on there, you, you could see it looked good. Uh, the 8 scope, you're able to do that with just the push of a button. You don't have to use this, so that made that much more convenient. And uh, I don't know, with the H-scope, I, I, I've never tried it, but I mean, you could probably do both wheel speed sensors at once if you wanted to and actually compare the two. Um, you know, give it a certain amount of gas, they should, both should be going at the same frequency, whatever. I mean, there's many tests you could do with it, but I just wanted to see what, what kind of signal we got out of there. So every time it's good to take a couple minutes, get to know your equipment, and that was a very good one. And on the Mitchell, you get the you know, this, the description and the operation. And whenever I was looking through that and I seen it was an active one, I figured that's a good one to test. Well, all right, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. Have a good one. Hey, guys. This is just like one last tip or one last thing I found on uh, scope. I, I dropped the horizontal cursor. Now, uh, when I go to the vertical cursors, Had another one because I have it in AC coupling. I believe it's coming up with uh, it's giving me the different like here's where the DC would end at low. Well, you can't see my finger, but in the middle there is where the DC would end, and then uh, it's picking up the AC at the top. So we're working with a very small voltage to get that signal, and it has your. Uh, your frequency you could spread out I mean you could see the the minimum the DC where it stops and then how much AC we're getting above the DC so that's pretty neat and it, it measures your peaks it keeps your peaks on there as far as you spread the cursors 
you could get your frequency you could get a lot of information with just a couple cursors on this H scope software I really like it and being this is such a small signal I mean it's a very small milliamp signal I was really worried if the uh, 512 would have been you know met its match on the signal too small for it to measure then it's like it, it's little brother the 502 it got uh, a lower input range which would be more suited to be in this range so you're probably going to get if you have the 502 you're probably going to get a lot better signal because you're more in its operating range and with the 512 I'm kind of dipping down and I was always curious since I got it but I'm more worried about an active speed sensor getting the you know or a passive speed sensor rather that the active speed sensors we've seen the H scope did fine we've seen the U scope did fine but uh next passive one I get I'm going to try to see if I could get a good signal with the H scope all right guys thanks for watching adios